Sup guys and welcome back to yet another devlog. First of all I want to thank everyone who suggested abilities for the pirate. We actually did a vote on stream to determine which one is the best. So if you're curious who won, stay tuned until the next devlog cause this is where I will be revealing it. But I promise it is very cool. This week I continued working on the world map I created the last time. First thing on the table was the minimap. It no longer fits the art style of the menu and quite honestly it never really looked good. So instead I started drawing them by hand. However I realized pretty quickly how time consuming and tedious that would be. So instead we, and by that I mean me and Twitch chat, came up with a genius idea. Just so you can follow along, every map is built using tiles. And on top of that I place foliage using my own level editor. The idea is then to take the tiles that we used to build the level, scale that down and draw a miniature version of it only to scale it up again. You just have to make sure that you scale it down properly, aka a multiple of 48 which is 192 would be a good choice. And don't be like this guy who just scaled it down to some arbitrary size, started drawing only to scale it up again and realize that his scaling is off. We have to try again. Why do we have to do that? Well, because we didn't scale it down by integer. If everything was done correctly, the tileset can then be used to create a very small map. Then you take a screenshot of that map and start drawing an A sprite. First I would correct some of the pixels at all, and then I would place objects on top of it to make it look cool. Here's a side by side comparison and it's quite obvious the new one looks much better. And it also fits into the color palette of the menu and into the art style of the game. Mwah. Missions can actually be played in two difficulties, normal and challenge. In challenge mode the level takes longer and is more challenging. Right now the challenge mode has only 10 rounds, but eventually I would like to make it infinite, just like in Bloons. And so at some point the enemies will overrun you because they progressively get stronger and stronger until you lose. There are two ways to play the challenge mode. You can either choose to take your campaign team, which you level up by playing the missions, or you could choose from a selection of heroes and build your own team. Is that you can have a generic... Why can I not do that anymore? Bro! The problem with this new team, however, is they all start at level 1, and I don't have a good way of leveling them up yet. You see that? You see that wind slash on the bar? You see the fireball on the bar? I can place this guy. Boom. And he's going to use the fireball on the first enemy that he fits. He finds. Okay. Now we can play each level with your own chosen team at level one. Starting from scratch. Boom. You saw that fireball? He's actually bad. Oh my god. He, he's gonna lose. He's gonna lose. Uh oh. No! No! How are you? Oh. Before this week, I always had buttons that let you level up heroes by spending gold. For example, level 1 to level 2 would be 10 gold, and then level 2 to level 3 would be 20 gold, and so on and so forth. This week, however, I changed how you gain experience points, and now only completing missions will grant you some of them until you level up. The reason for that is because it was too easy to level up heroes and then you would smash through the missions. Now obviously I could have nerfed experience points, but that was not the idea. I want gold to be a currency which you buy upgrades with instead of levels. I also tested other ways of gaining experience, but none of them really worked out. For example, you can make it so that killing enemies grants experience, but then archers would be level 1 million, while the defenders melee units would be level 1. The archers just have such a range advantage that the melee units would need some sort of ability to counteract their disadvantage, turning them effectively into rangers too and then at some point you only have rangers which I don't like at all. You could also make it so that the party shares experience points but then the best strategy would be to place all of the units on the map as fast as possible so they all gain experience. While you could potentially make that passive that would help a little bit so you don't have to deploy your units but that would still bring up yet another problem which is very early levels you are constantly leveling up which effectively turns the game into a menu simulator where you constantly switch between each skill tree to spend your one skill point that you've just earned. And let's multiply that by 10 heroes, you're constantly in a menu and no longer playing a tower defense game. I don't think that's great game design. So no matter what I do, it's always a terrible decision and I don't know what to do. So if you have any suggestions, anything that I could have missed, feel free to tell me in the comments because I really want to make this a good system and I think I want to keep the Enders mode. I'm toying with the idea of not using it, but I feel like it should be in there and it can be good. For the remainder of the week, I was busy drawing the rest of the minimaps. And additionally, I still can't decide which markers I want for my world map. See, whenever you complete a mission, 
the game tracks whether you have unlocked some of its challenges. For example, don't lose any hearts, don't let any heroes die, do not pause the game and just beat the level. These are four challenges that you can earn and they will award you stars. Or in this case now I've changed these stars to oranges to fit the theme of the game. Obviously they look a thousand times cooler, right? My problem is though, how do I display that on the world map? Because I don't want to pollute it with a bunch of UI elements. Yet there still has to be some sort of indication if you are missing some stars. Defender's Quest for example uses some stars below each mission to indicate that you are missing something. So yeah, for now I have just put them on this mission selection menu and you can actually hover over each of the oranges to tell you what you have to do. I don't know how I could put them on the world map. So yeah, again, if you have any idea, Feel free, like I'm, I'm happy for any suggestions. Yeah, and this about sums up everything I did this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please leave a like. So the YouTube algorithm pushes my video and shows it to more people. It really does make a difference and I appreciate everyone who does so. Until then, I see you all next time. Peace!